Good morning, Soul Hubbards. Uh, we're here, we're joined by Lynn Ray today. Hi, Lynn. Thank you for joining Hi. us. And uh, so we're doing this short series around what it's like to be a woman in 2022. Um, and we thought it was a prime opportunity to talk to the women in the Soul Hub team um, and bring out different topics that are relevant to them. So uh, Lynn was having a haircut and was listening to the other stories that the rest of the team has shared um, and uh, very kindly volunteered to share some of her stories. Some you may well have already heard through some of Soul Hub's channels, um, but I think we'll have a different flavour today. Uh, as time moves on we all have uh, the the story changes doesn't it so uh, we have time to kind of reflect back and look back on life particularly you know over the last couple of years uh, when we've all been to a certain extent kind of locked down within let's say our bodies um, and we've not been able to necessarily escape them in the way that we maybe normally do so maybe that's quite a nice place to start then um so, you know, I guess, you know, particularly you've had quite a journey over the last two years as well, right? Um, do you want to just bring us up to speed with maybe where you're at? Um, well, well, I've, um, I mean, this is a poignant year for me because I'll be 60 this year. And for, for quite a few years, I was never quite sure that I would make it. So um, even as, as close as a couple of years ago, well, two and a half, maybe, you know, I, I, um, I faced, I faced my eternity quite, quite severely. So um, for me, aging has always been um, something to be really um, grateful for and, and something to celebrate. So, you know, each so year. Very casually, and I kind of want to go like it's, yeah. you know, it's huge, right? So, yeah. yeah. So, so it is a celebration. And, but I also know that we, we all want to age in a way that we are comfortable with and we're happy with. Um, and, and, and there's so many, you know, cause I work with women and their faces from, from many different perspectives. And so, you know, I, I've come to appreciate um, and had had them myself that the, the kind of blocks and um, um, the, 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 the negative issues we, we women all have with our faces and our bodies and and I think in this last couple of years you know the face has become even more um of a of a kind of calling card because it's 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 here we, we're presenting daily and and the focus is on our face you know so um I I personally believe that if if you, I mean, I teach face yoga as well as do facial specialized facial massage. And so I, you, you know, you can look after your face in the same way you look after your body. Um, and, and that that's what. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you must find people often come to you and think like the face is just as it is you know um and that's what that we're dealt with it's kind of like this is the card um yeah. but you know our faces change you know and it's very much I mean being the face is very much out there the first thing we see but it also hits all the elements and it carries all of our emotions and you know so it's it is a story in itself isn't it, it uh, yeah and, and I think that story is really beautiful you know um I think probably up until the age of 40 you you kind of you kind of get the face that you were born with mm. um you know maybe it looks better if you've looked after your skin um but I think after after that age you 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 start to carry carry everything you've lived through and and sometimes you know I, I know personally because I've carried carried quite a lot with my health um but you you don't have to you know, you know our stories change over the years and sometimes the the our, our our face you know the muscles on the face uh, the expressions uh, are formed by our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions and so over the years those change and you know we may have had a tough time for a while and and you know you can tell when someone's suffering by looking at their face can't you, you can tell when someone's stressed sad frightened um unwell and 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 yet as you leave that behind and, and you do work on yourself and you start to feel better sometimes we're left with looking in the mirror and and kind of seeing the past and and really we we can 
we can kind of update update the visual by um having believing you know learning to love what we are what we are but also by doing facial exercises it helps you to rearrange the way the muscles work on the face so you know you you learn to release tension in muscles that are overworked um you learn to reactivate muscles that have gone to sleep and when you two two or three of the most important things i think with the faces one is posture you know if we if we if we sit with our head forward looking at the the, the computer or or you know the posture changes when you're sad or stressed yeah that that affects the face because it it, it draws it down and it creates tension here if we clench our teeth because of stress it, it you know it it creates tension here which pulls the face down and makes it harder to smile um if we breathe through the mouth um and the tongue is is down the bottom of the mouth as well that brings the face down so by releasing the tension around here and and here <laughs> then we we can we can just allow the face more freedom to to lift and, and express our joy and and our you know our more positive um thoughts um and and even you know sometimes if you if you create um um a face of of positivity and and happiness or joy or even just a you know a gentle smile it it has the kind of the fact you know it's a bit like fake it till you make it you you feel better on the inside um when when the body and the face are in a in a position of ease so I was just going to say almost we talk very often about you know smiling and then the effect that has on your body um yeah and I was listening to a beautiful talk with Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu and they were talking about like ha- how to have a long life and a joyful life and much of it was to laugh and to yeah. you know to find the joy I guess and and actually you will live longer yeah and, you know we, we don't necessarily correlate the two right and, and they, they weren't saying not to um process emotions and you know but kind of to let them go right and and yeah. the face um I mean it's kind of fascinating talking to you because I don't think you know it's it's a relatively new area right it's not something that um that many people I think are aware of of the significance of everything like you just said our emotional state but I also our inner physical state um well I think we're used to dealing with what we see on the external surface you know we put makeup on it we we spend a lot of money on um yeah on makeup or or cosmetic procedures in order to to change you know it's like it's like spending a lot of money on clothes clothes without doing the exercise to or losing weight or or putting weight on what whatever it is that that you know gives you the best healthy because for me it's all about health you know it's about having a healthy structure healthy body healthy with food healthy um with with how you you know exercise and um and then and it's the same with the face so and and i think as well it's giving ourselves permission to 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 enjoy our face you know there's a lot of there's a lot of shame around the face that comes from i mean you know i grew up in in my my poor mom well, I say poor mum, I mean, she had a very happy life, but she was burnt by acid when she was 21. And so we grew up in a household where there was no vanity. You know, we didn't look in the mirror. We never told we were pretty. So the, the face kind of wasn't important in the sense where, you know, a little girl might grow up constantly being told she's pretty. I think both are, can be a burden in, in how you, you perceive your face as you, as you get older. And I, I think... Um, just being able to look in the mirror and and instead of focusing on what you don't like think okay well what what is working what do I like you know what what is positive about how I look and and enjoying it you know there was there was a series of photographs some time ago where a photographer had taken before and after photos of people before and then after he's someone said I love you or you're beautiful you know, and, and when, when you are able to take that in and embody it, it, it affects the way you look. You know, people people say, oh, I hate it for my photo taken. And and you can tell because 
that they're, they're sending out that message. So, you know, it's all, it's all about intention as well as taking a positive um, stance on knowing that you, you can, you can add something to what you do in, in the sense of doing yoga and, you know, you can teach your muscles to do what they were designed to do rather than what we've habitually picked up over the years from, from stress, from bad posture, from, you know, all, all this, whatever, you know, we can just learn to leave that behind and just have the muscles working, doing what they're meant to do so that we, we are creating something that shows who we are. You know, it's like, you're, you're when you're meeting someone especially on here you know that it's harder to read body language so mm-hmm. it's really important to be able to give the message through through your face I like think the way you, you spoke about earlier you spoke about almost the past being kind of on your face you know um and uh, I guess relating that to the fact that you know we don't get to change our face in our lifetime and where we are now is almost uh you know the the youngest you'll look exactly you'll that young again right yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of, I love that saying yeah <laughs> as you it's said very, it's so true. which parts even if it's just your lips or your nose yeah. or something right yeah. to um to send that loving that loving signal because we all know what it feels like as you said when someone says yeah. I love you when you say it to somebody else yeah and yet we don't say that necessarily to ourselves well, no So yours has been quite, you know, it's it's an interesting mix of the internal. So you've had to do the internal work as well. Um, As you said, you kind of grew up without almost a mirror. So you've probably learned in another way an appreciation of uh, beauty or um, aesthetics, let's say. and what you. Well, well, I I think, yeah, I think I actually didn't. You know, it's taken me a long way around to come back to um, being able to to deal with the face as, as a visual thing even though still I come from an exercise point of view, you know, I, I became a makeup artist, but I work, that's working behind the scenes, making someone else look their best. And, and then um, doing all the facial exercises and the facial massage from a structural pain point of view. And now I can totally appreciate how important it is, you know, the, the aesthetics of it as well. Um, and, you know, having had breast cancer, um, I, I've had to relearn to, to appreciate and accept my body with its changes. And, and so in a way that was easier, maybe because you choose who you show that to, yeah. whereas your face is, is, is already always out there. And, and maybe we've got more guards in front of the face. And I don't know, but it's taken me a long time to, to actually um accept that it's okay to spend a little bit of time in front of the mirror to to make yourself look your best or you know just yeah just to appreciate what you have and make the most of it and and want it want to want to look your best and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that you know we, we're a, we, we, we're allowed mm. It's, mm-hmm. it's such a negative isn't it it's almost that balance yeah. of you know it's like self-love and and narcissistic love or yeah. you know um uh spending time and and feeling good and looking good versus then yeah. you know people think well you spent your whole time for, it's so vain and how yeah, we find exactly. that is in life right yeah yeah so what yeah. kind of so i guess you get women from all sorts of um uh well come with all sorts of reasons um so to, to see you for their work your work so I say yeah I mean for years it was it was men and women you know because it, it's 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 always been about um problems with jaw pain mm-hmm. um so you know working with a dentist and it's, it's been a bit more more clinical um and then over the years it's got a bit a bit more feminine and as I've as I've been working with the exercises as well I I just feel that that we women have such a tough, a tough time of it that, that, um, mm. yeah. And, and, and you know, it might be, it might be pain that that is your reason for making a change in, in, in your habits or what you do. It might be because as you get, you know, you start to get to a certain age and, and a lot of us notice asymmetry in the face. Um, it might be just that, you, you stop liking yourself in photos 
um, or you know you frown a lot or you um, you start to notice that the jawline is is going um, or you know I've, I've worked with younger people as well um, you know singers who can't find their voice um, people going through therapy and, and realize that this is this is an area that it helps release the, the tension so anything to do with someone a singer how does that work so somebody who's kind of maybe afraid to kind of express themselves through their singing and worried about their face yeah well it's it's more it's more that you know if 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 you have jaw tension then it's it's very difficult you know that the posture is connected to the larynx which is connected to the diaphragm so so it affects the voice the the palate the roof of the mouth the soft palate if there's tension there it's yeah. really hard to to give it your full flow um if it's singing for pleasure you know when, when you've got a lot of tension here some people find talking tiring or painful mm-hmm. um so it, it, it allows the freedom you know it, it helps to get the flow get the flow going and and create more space and yeah so what, what do you feel there's the difference between I guess your own journey therefore and now what that brings to your work um is there what what what's unearthed in that for you um I I think that um I know that you can change anything any habits any um any issues it's it's not about it's our fault you know it's not about blame it's Mm -hmm. just we we have created where we are now and if someone comes to me with whatever they've got I I can do a certain amount um but it's it's being able to reach that person and help them come to the conclusion and the knowledge that okay well I'm a facilitator and I you know with massage I can help you remind you what it feels like to be um, less tense but at the end of the day it's your habits it's your beliefs it's your whatever your stress that has got you to where you are today and so I, I guess it's it's the knowing that I've done it that helps me to really believe that anyone if I can do it anyone can do it you know yeah Yeah. and I guess when you say that you're you talk about um you you know your belief to to stay alive yeah yeah you needed to heal your own body through your beliefs and uh your perceptions of what the body's capable of yeah Uh, and uh, phenomenal you know the body is phenomenal and yeah I I, I think it's even more amazing than than we even know. You know, it's just believing that. And I guess that hope, you know, isn't it that it's uh, it, it's quite hard to almost explain. But by somebody coming to see you and just even you know hearing that there can be a different way, or it doesn't need to be the way it is, it's much yeah. more than probably what they come to you initially for. You yeah, know, you do that some of the um uh, almost the aesthetics and external, but actually, as you well know, it's like it's the emotional stuff underneath. Yeah. Uh, that you can probably see it's like sometimes you think you go to a dentist and they look straight at your feet, you look feet your teeth, you look straight at somebody's face and well, a good and, dentist might look at your feet as well. <laughs> <laughs> probably Holistic how you walk. <laughs> you look fully at the whole kind of body and in yeah, yeah. Place and what we're carrying and you know the story's right there for you isn't it yeah yeah it's we, we are amazing you know we we really are and 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 even if I can help someone take a couple of steps in the right direction yeah then and then that's that's amazing you know if they take more that's that's even better but even one step you know forward and into believing wow you know I I hadn't thought of it that way or or I hadn't realized that um that I could you know do that and and I think giving giving someone the tools to to work with their face Mm -hmm. is is giving giving women or giving us all back the power um with aging you know so that we can 
we can go into aging with with confidence and with knowledge that that we we can be as proactive as we can in a gentle loving way to to create the best body face um mentality to 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 you know to, to age gracefully and in in a way that we're happy with rather than every time we look in the mirror we're thinking oh my god another year another wrinkle another you know I, I don't like it you, you can take you can take it back and you're not looking for someone else you know my my idea is not to keep people coming back to see me every week it's to is to give them the tools to to take with them f- for the rest of their life so that you know that they can they can keep going with it yeah I like the way you talked about almost the empowerment I was with my mum and dad and uncle aunties at the weekend you know and they're between 82 and 77 you know my dad's still performing in an orchestra my uncle has just been cross-country skiing at 81 you know and you just and Andrew and I were talking about how do how do we want to grow old and it's like I want to grow old with energy and vibrancy you know um Mm. and as you said then if you keep looking at your face thinking god I'm getting older I'm getting older then you know it's going to be a long time getting old yeah and you carry that every you know you're almost carrying that every day that you're looking at your face well that that was what um that was what really kept me going and saved my life because when when I was struggling and I couldn't breathe and I couldn't walk very well Mm. I thought if this is the life I've got now what is the point of it? You know, I want a life where I can be vibrant and fit and well and do all the things I want to do. Yeah. And so I, I had to really just believe that that was possible. And so any other life, yeah, is is not a life for me. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, it is, it's, you know, it sounds miraculous, right? Yeah. Um, and I think you know as as you told your story for Soul Hub through the Soul Hub journal before you know just how um, you know it, it is a phenomenal story of, of recovery and healing and then the power of belief um, yeah. I think it's beautiful that you then do that work and, and you know people get a sense of that um, when they come with something probably very different and then this is but you know they get all of you and all of your history as well in that knowledge yeah, yeah incredible okay i think we're uh come to a beautiful conclusion there so thank you lynn thank you for that was lovely me. lovely to chat uh and so that you can find you through the soul hub website um and read a little bit more information about exactly what you do but i think that gave a really good flavor of just cool. you know. <laughs> well enjoy the sunshine thank you bye See you later bye